Hello and welcome to the second part of the Gateway to BIM webinar series. My name is Zoltan Tod. Over here is our resident architect, Mr. Ilyes Pab. Hi there. Today we look at how to use architectural data. Lots to do, so let's take a look. Building Information Modeling, or BIM for short, is a wonderful tool to create great architecture. Unfortunately, many might believe that BIM is out of their reach. This is because adapting from 2D drafting to BIM might seem time-consuming and costly. Also, it seems that BIM means a whole new workflow and methods which you need to learn from scratch, and the new requirements and legislations may seem too complicated to follow. Our mission behind ArchLine is to open a gateway to BIM. ArchLine makes the transition from 2D drafting to BIM step by step. It takes you from 2D to 3D modeling and introduces BIM parameters to your workflow. Sharing your projects with other professionals is effortless. The software makes sure that you can use your already existing CAD skills, files and projects to stay competitive. The gate is now open for new challenges and previously unavailable projects. ArchLine is an out-of-the-box IFC certified BIM software. No extra plugins are needed to complete your project because your design will contain everything in a single file. You will work together with other parties of the building industry seamlessly. Avoid misunderstandings. Use real products. Collaborate better than before. BIM is quickly becoming the standard. Make sure you are there with ArchLine. As a quick reminder of what we talked about last time, we looked at how to use ArchLine, how to build up a, a model from scratch. We yep. worked on a, on a building which had no previous documentation, so we looked at what kind of tools we can use to build up a 3D model, while we also looked at the BIM, BIM tools that can help you with your work. Today we are going to take a different perspective. We are going to look at what to do when you already have some kind of documentation, right? Yeah. Uh, today we, we still use the same project. Uh, this will actually go uh, over the, the whole uh, webinar series, this mm -hmm. uh, five series uh, episodes. Uh, but now, as you, just as you mentioned, first at the very first half of this uh, event, we will focus on how to uh, process DWG files, JPEGs, PDF files, and, and mm -hmm. how to handle that, that content, what you need to know uh, when you work with those files. And then uh, we will also cover uh, how to turn uh, content into a real terrain, how to set up the geolocation of the building, yes. uh, okay. and actually how to, uh, how to assemble the terrain with the, with the building, because that could be also an interesting thing when you work on, a, on the side of a hill or something, how to, how to align them perfectly uh, as they will um, appear in the real um, situation. Yes. And also we will uh, talk about the, the, the shadow analysis, uh, mm -hmm. Solar access, yeah. how, how, how the sun will cast shadows at a certain uh, time period uh, over its surrounding uh, with the building and the surrounding buildings because uh, many countries uh, demand this uh, to be to, for you to be able to prove that your building is not affecting the, the, the neighbors uh, much more than it's allowed. So basically, this is what we will cover today. Yes, as always, I mm. urge you to ask your questions during the show. You can ask it on the right-hand side of the, of the video. If you can't see the chat bar at the moment, you might need to minimize the, the view, and then you can, you can submit your questions. Whatever you are going to ask, we are going to try to incorporate them into the show. Yeah. But uh, we are always very um, grateful of all the questions that we are receiving before, during, or even after the shows. This is what, what makes it very relevant. Yeah. And now, let's, let's backtrack a little bit and talk about the import formats in general. Uh, what kind of file formats or how would you group the, the file formats that ArchLine is able to work with? Well, ArchLine is, uh, we can say that it's very, very communicative with the, with the world around it. Uh, it it's, it's a very good platform to mm -hmm. work with, with other uh, professions and other architects or other uh, designers and to receive the, those data that they have created with perhaps other software and then uh, work with that and pass it back to the original designer or to other professionals. The first focus is obviously the, the BIM, the uh, how you can communicate with BIM uh, software and that's the IFC at the top of the mm -hmm. screen now. Uh, that, that allows you to actually communicate buildings in th instead of models and, yes. and drawings. We covered this uh, uh, a bit and we will actually cover this in a little bit more detail in the, in the following sessions. Uh, but uh, the main point here is that you will receive the building itself, not just the drawings, the 2D or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Now then comes the, uh, some, something like the, like the documentation uh, communication or something like that, like for example the DWG DXF uh, files where you will 
uh, likely receive drawings, uh, annotated and, and, and detailed drawings, which you can use. This we will cover today as well, how to mm -hmm. digest the data, how to process it, and how to turn that 2D content into a real building, yes. and how to actually uh, open it. Uh, there, there is also uh, other format uh, for 3D files, and now that's very, that's a very wide range. You can uh, read uh, point clouds into Archline, classic model files like OBJ, 3DS, SKP. Uh, so these, these are all uh, formats that you can mm -hmm. um, import complete models or, or just like assets, like a chair or, or, or some something from a maker. Uh, also, there comes the um, the renderers, the third-party renderers. Now, you may know that Archline has a built-in renderer, uh, but for those of you who, who already use some solution like, for example, Atlantis or other uh, third-party renderers, uh, Archline directly connects uh, with their native format, and then you can just export your model from Archline, and then you can do the visuals mm -hmm. in the third-party software if you uh, uh, prefer. And also, of course, you can uh, read JPEG files. Now, those those are uh, for a very wide range, uh, you can um, read in JPEG files, for example, for materials. We will cover this in the visual session. Or uh, today we will work with a scanned uh, copy of a, of a drawing, uh, which is also a, a, a JPEG file. And we will also talk about the PDF files today. A PDF can be a raster PDF or a, uh, or a vector PDF. We will cover that. Uh, the Archline can uh, read uh, both of those. So basically this is uh, what you can read. Uh, talking about the, the, the final uh, parts there, that, which is the Microsoft Excel. Uh, that's where your quantity takeoff will be that's listed, right. so you can make the calculations. Uh. But since today's webinar is about architectural uh, data use, uh, <coughs> I think the most important formats that we have to look at today are PDFs, JPEGs, and things which traditionally yeah. are used for yeah. carrying data, DXF, yeah, that's WG, right. for instance. So let's see how the data process goes. So how do we import something into, into, the, into the system? And then when you show us how, talk, us about, uh, talk about what kind of formats we can import in those areas. Well, first things first, uh, you can always find all those file formats that are supported with the current version of the software in the file menu. Uh, so you just go to the file and you will find import. And there is a list of um, kind of like the favorites, but you can, whenever you go to the import, you will be able to reach all of the formats. Mm -hmm. so this is a bit uh, wider, uh, um, it's, it's a bit longer list than, than the previous was. So here you can always find uh, the, the formats that, that the software can read. And this is one of the sources, this is the traditional way. Uh, but what I like to use a lot, uh, that is the uh, drag and drop, so you can actually oh, just find when you the can just pick one file yeah. in the file explorer, and you just drag and drop it onto the onto the software itself. And That's then right. It, then it actually recognizes what kind of formats we are talking <coughs> about, and it imports it accordingly. So now that I have these here, I can just click and drag and and, and load that data. Now before I do that, let me just close this project because uh, first we would like to focus on how to start the uh, mm -hmm. the work. So I just uh, open up a new project. So this is an empty uh, project now, which I will work on uh, now. So this, uh, whenever you open the project uh, and create a new project, you will always end up with an empty paper. That's the ground floor of the floor plan. And here you can import uh, whatever source you have. So now I have, um, first let's just talk about the uh, PDF files. Mm -hmm. Now talking about the PDF files, I have two samples here. Uh, one is a situation plan and one is a building um, drawing, actually. Oh, I, o I already differences between them. Yeah, I already opened those. Uh, it's appearing uh, here. So uh, the first one, it's a, this is a, um, a classic CAD drawing uh, saved in a PDF file or some, some say printed in a PDF file. So what you see here is the content. It's, it's with neat, nice, clean lines. And whenever and I use control and scroll, so whenever I zoom in, uh, for, for a very short uh, time, it's, it's pixelated. But whenever I release the mouse button, it's always nice mm -hmm. and clean. So you can, you can understand that? that this is actually, actually a vector. Ah, okay. So it's like a CAD drawing. Just now it's saved in a PDF file. You can uh, import this uh, into Archline by using uh, the file import and PDF as geometry. Now I, let's just do that and I select this now uh, and when I do that the software automatically reads the content and it will 
visualize, uh, it will actually um, create a drawing uh, in front of you. And then the first step, always when you import something uh, from whichever source you have when it's a drawing, you should uh, consider that it might be not in the correct scale for you. Uh, it mm. was perhaps uh, correctly scaled in the source software, uh, but it's not uh, necessarily cor correctly scaled when you open it. Uh, so here, actually, we have an information of how it was scaled. Yes, it's, it's, it's one here. to twenty, I think. Yeah, we can. We could actually rot rotate it, but it's not that important. So it's uh, it's about uh, one to twenty or something uh, mm -hmm. was the original value. And if I use the the measure tool, th this is what I use quite often when I load something, and I can tell that this is very likely not true that this wall is oh, only yeah. seven point seven yeah. millimeters. We might need to scale it, scale yeah. this up. So how do we do that? So to scale a content up like this, this is uh, you can see that when you select it, it's a group. So mm -hmm. you can you can actually scale a drawing it can be a group it can be a bunch of lines or something like that when you select that uh, you will find the edit and there is this uh, move and scale and there's a difference between move and duplicate the move mm -hmm. will actually move this content and create the the new version the duplicate will keep the original and create the scale version as well but now uh, we can so just move it so. i just would like to upscale it I, as you can see you can have those ready-made options now it's not okay for me because i need to uh, perhaps uh, 50 times uh, make I it larger so, yeah, I want to so i so i click little. here and then i have the option first things first uh, i need to uh, click to the uh, scale sc uh, origin uh, of the scaling that now this can be anywhere i will just click here and then when i move my mouse you can see you can actually graphically scale this but now I know the scaling value, so I click here and I click on the type the value. So I will be prompted to type a, a certain value that I need to use and I click OK. And then now the software rescales that and I can check whether I like the result or not. And I think Maybe you can use uh, one of the dimensions to... to yeah, let's just, it. let's just check this. I know it's in millimeters, so this should be correct if I uh, measure it, measure it with distance. And uh, let's just click here. Well, perhaps it was a different value, but as you can see, yes. uh, the, 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 the thickness uh, and the, uh, the whole uh, content is enlarged. So it's the, on, the only thing uh, that you I need to figure out. I think it makes out, sense, but it's, it's an imperial. Yeah, perhaps. So, so I, should, the, I should have yeah. uh, scaled it uh, two point something, because yes. now we are working in the, in the metric system. So. Uh, whatever I use, uh, I will end up with a drawing like this. And uh, even if uh, now it's uh, uh, around 400 millimeters, I can I can actually turn it into a wall How do very you do that? very quickly. I just go to the building, and ins instead of starting the wall tool and drawing around, I can use the walls and DWG drawing. This is perfect. I can just click on near to the one of the edge point endpoints of this line, near to the other one and on the thickness of it. And then this will be automatically turned into a real wall. Mm -hmm. So I can just quickly go through, click, 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 and three clicks make a wall and just do it uh, all around and then place the doors and windows. We actually have a detailed video about this, yes. uh, but this is how you can uh, create a drawing out of a 2D, I mean, create a building out of a 2D drawing. I think the point here is, is that the software is able to recognize the lines yeah. if the PDF is imported as such. But what yeah. happens if you don't have such a vector-based PDF? What happens if you only well, have if a I, scanned image? Yeah, if I have the other option, let me just uh, create a new project. If I have the other option, which was opened um, here, Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, still it's a PDF, but as you can see, it, we can already tell it's pixelated. If I zoom in, it won't clear up. It's just even getting worse. So that's as good as it gets, right? That's the most that I can take of it because it, this was scanned with a uh, with a scanner and it was not not mm -hmm. uh, vectorized or it yes. it was not coming out of a, of a cat software or something like that. I can use this, but the method is a bit different. Now here, I I will either choose the uh, file. Let me just create a new project, okay? I will either choose the file or I can use the drag and drop. Now I will go with the file, import, PDF as image. And it was, uh, well, I just navigated off. So let me just uh, open it uh, from here. So it's here, this one. I just drag and drop. By the way, if you drag and drop a PDF content, it will be automatically treated as a raster. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so even if it's, <laughs> uh, if it's vectorized, even if it's geometric, you have to import it uh, from the menu. Yeah. Otherwise, it will be treated as a That's raster right. image. What That's happens right. now? So now uh, we have this uh, Im uh, import option, uh, which is the resolution. Now, when you have a content, which is uh, which can be large resolution, small resolution, but you can tell the software how it converts it. Uh, now, the default option, this here, is 
likely to be okay. Mm -hmm. uh, if you import something and you can see that it's uh, worse than the original, then you need to increase this. If it's fine, then you can keep, I think this uh, default option will go most of the cases. Uh, if this uh, PDF would have many pages, I could select the pages, but now I don't have that, so I just click OK. And the software reads that, and then I can you know, click with one and two clicks, and I can work with that, and I can um, work on top in, of this. Is this in scale? Uh, well, as you can see, when you when you import something, you can uh, set up with two corner points, so so you won't be able to tell whether it's okay or not. Likely, it's not 99.9%. Mm -hmm. It's not okay, and simply it's because the, the 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 image file does not contain any scaling information. So you need to we call it calibrate, uh, and this works uh, in a very easy fashion. You just click on the image and you use the local menu of that image. And there is the calibrate tool. You can find this actually in the drafting as well, but it's very simple to remember that you can find in the context menu. It's called calibrate. The calibrate needs uh, a distance that you know about on your image file. So you just select uh, the first, the starting point. And by the way, the longest uh, you can find is the best because okay, um, so you should try there, will, the longest there will always, always be some bias in, in your mm -hmm. scaling. But uh, if you measure long distances, the bias is smaller. So let's just go with this one. As you can see, there's already an error here, uh, which I can place myself into this uh, scaling because I cannot determine easily which is the corner point. So this is uh, okay here. It's 24.7. Don't forget that you're in uh, millimeters now. Yeah, now I'm in millimeters. And by the way, talking about that, uh, whenever you are in a situation like this, you can at, at any time, you can go to the settings, and you can find uh, the units and angles, and there you can change the primary unit. For example, in this case, this is what I need, uh, and then later I can change back. So it's it's easy to uh, yes. change there. You back. can see it in the in the bottom right corner yeah, with here. The, what the actual unit is. Yeah. So going back, what you do is that you right click, calibrate, right click, and then calibrate, you pick a distance. It's so always good to pick a longer distance. This and one. Then you then you just start to type in the value. And this here, and it's it was twenty four point seven. Yes. And okay. So now it's something happened. I can see it's larger, and I can use the same dimension measure distance tool to measure. If, and if it's approximately okay, then it's okay. See, so it's around, yes. aroundish. Uh, yes, I, that's as good I as it to, gets. Yeah. Uh, we are working with a scanned low resolution image that we have yeah. to be satisfied with what we have. Yeah, so you need to consider that there will be a few centimeters uh, difference between the reality and your scan. Mm -hmm. You can always. Uh, recalibrate it if you need it, uh, but because of the software cannot find the snap points, there is always a bias in, uh, in working in a, with a scanned image. So, so much about images. <coughs> what happens with, uh, with CAD files, DWG, DXF? How do we import those? Uh, well, if you have another uh, content like, um, well, let me just mention that this would have happened uh, if I work with, uh, with a classic JPEG file. Oh, it yes, would, it's it would very be important. Exactly the same. So if I import this, I measure this content, and then I can work on top of that. In mm -hmm. that case, I won't use the files, the walls on DWG. I will just literally click through and type the distances and draw the, the walls on top of the image file. So going back, what you uh, asked uh, about is the DWG file. The DWG file is, is a very widespread format. You can find uh, the file import here in file import to DWG file, and also the, the click and drag import is, is uh, supported, so oh, this, that's too. what I do. So I just uh, click and drag, and then uh, when this dialog opens, let me just go back here, I will see a preview uh, of this um, content. Mm -hmm. Now this content uh, has not just the preview, but there is a tiny um, ruler here. It appears to make you understand whether uh, you should use this value here, or you can use any sort of other um, oh, okay. units. Some of the DWG files contain information about the scaling uh, of the measurement system they were created in, but uh, not all of them. Uh, actually, quite a lot does not contain any, any sort of information about that. So you can actually tell the software that, well, I don't think it's 10 feet here. Uh, let's let's, let's go. Let's go with millimeters. That's also not okay because th this is actually what we can see here now. It's a building, and that's a building lot. Mm -hmm. uh, so this should be around, I don't know, a few times 10 meters, uh, and this is obviously not good. But so this, what do you suggest? What? This will go okay if I, I think if I select meter, I'm closer. Yeah, I 
think let's just are. zoom in and what I usually do I try to find some place when, for example here I know that this is a thickness of a wall so if I zoom in and I try to find a see this is this is five meters from here to here that that means this is one meter a unit mm -hmm. so this means that that is likely okay because I know that this wall is around 40 centimeters 400 millimeters so, so this you, is okay. So what you suggest that it is some kind of try and error kind of thing. Yeah, you but as you can see, it's very. And you have to uh, play with the preview to, to yeah. find the right scale, and then you, you yeah. import it. Actually, if you if you already know uh, the uh, the multiplier that you need to use, then you can go the classic way, and you can just tell that it should be I don't know a thousand times larger. Okay, so this works as well. But uh, if you would like to uh, use the units, then this is how it works. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so this is this is uh, what we want. I think the scaling is perfect now. Uh, let's go with OK, and then I can just see the result when I click OK. It appears as a 2D drawing. This was in imported. Now, when you import um, DWG file and any sort of files uh, supporting layers, uh, likely you will see the layer structure of that file. In case of the DWG file, this had several layers, which now that I've imported it. I can see in the layer manager. Now, the layer manager appears here at the bottom. If you click there, you can find the layer list. This is now a mixture of the layers that I already had in this project and layers that came with the uh, DWG file. Now, as you can see, there is a filter list here, and this filter uh, actually filters for the all layers, used layers, and the situation plan. Mm -hmm. Now, the situation plan has these four layers. That was the original name of the DWG file, so that's why the, the filter already got its name uh, based on the, the, the name of the file, of the DWG file. So this is how I can easily filter the content, I can rename them, I can set their uh, visibility, editability, printability, and so on. So these are, these are all there uh, for your convenience. So now when, now when I hit, uh, hit OK, I can start working with that. There is another thing uh, about this, when you would like to figure out what content belongs to which layer. I think one is the uh, one of the easiest and, and, and quickest way to use the uh, layer walk. Now, mm -hmm. Layer walk appears as a list, so you can click on any of those, uh, these are actually layer names, to figure out what the content oh, of so that layer, layer is. So the layer walk shows the, the content that you can actually work yeah. with at the moment, so the active, active layers, yeah. and then you can toggle between them. So you can isolate parts. Yeah, for example, if this would be a much more detailed, much more sophisticated uh, DWG uh, file with a lot of detail and, and annotations and things like that, I could only focus on the terrain lines or if I mm -hmm. want. Uh, because actually now this is what we would like to work with. We would like to uh, end up with the terrain based on this DWG file. This is why we loaded that. So I can use that or at any time I can just get back to the original one and start progressing uh, with that. How now, do things <coughs> uh, get to a layer? Uh, whenever you create something in Archline, like let's just go with the wall. That's 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 a very basic thing. When you draw something, when you click with two clicks, it's automatically created on its uh, default layer. That's how we call it. The default layer is what you can find when you right click here and choose property, and now it will end up on the wall load bearing wall, mm -hmm. and this this is where you can actually change it. Or when you already have something, like for example this line, when you select it, it tells that it's actually on the line layer, okay. so uh, which is automatically now I can change to, to something else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So either you import something and it comes with its own layers, or you uh, just simply uh, set the layer for your convenience as you, as you want mm -hmm. to set it up. Now, before we start uh, working with this, as you can see, this is um, uh, actually um, aligned with the north. So now this drawing was created uh, to to be aligned with the north. So now north points to the to the top of the drawing. Yes. But I actually uh, find it easier to 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 work with it if these lines are are horizontal. Mm, yeah, so so I just select the content. And then I have that you can actually rotate the content like this. This is very easy. But in this case, it's very difficult to figure out how, how I should rotate it. What is the exact rotation value to be able to handle it as a, as a horizontal part? So instead of this one, I use uh, the. Sorry, before you do that, yeah. should we mark the north direction before we rotate it? Because then yeah, that's right. That that's right. Would be lost. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's uh, good to mention because when you have something and you rotate it later, you won't, you won't find if there is no, as you can see on this drawing, there's no north symbol. So I will make uh, one myself. I use the line tool. And actually, I will use a line with an arrowhead on top of it. So I just click here 
and I create a tiny arrow. Just this some kind points of to north. Marker so that you can see where north yeah. usually or actually is. And it's now when I select it, it's part of the selection. So I click here instead of the classic rotation, the, the graphical rotation, I click here. So I have the rotation options. Mm -hmm. And then now I can find the rotate from. This is a very handy tool because this allows you to set up a rotation origin. This is yes. where I would like to rotate this whole content around. And then I can click and pick up a point which, which I'm actually picking up and then rotate mm -hmm. around the so one rotation point origin. Where it is, it's pinned yeah. down and the other one moves around. Yeah, see, this is what happens. And when you have a drawing like this, it's very easy to misclick some places because they're tiny oh, little definitely. you know, endpoints and, and division points and so on. So, so to be able to lock it to the horizontal direction, just move close to the horizontal direction and keep holding the shift key. This is the horizontal lock, the direction lock. So whenever I move my mouse, see it's, it's, it's not changing. It's always horizontal. So now when I click to accept it, it was locked and, and rotated uh, mm -hmm. the way I wanted. And then now, because I have uh, created this north symbol for myself, now I can set up the real north uh, direction in my project to align with this one. Um, there is a cool thing about this. If, if you click on this one, it actually tells you the angle. So you just click here or you just remember that it was uh, around uh, 108. 108. So you just click here on the north symbol and you just type the same same value. It's 108 uh, and then now the north uh, is aligned with the original Perfect. one. Now, uh, staying at the topic of geolocation, I think that's the next thing what uh -huh. we should, should do while processing this uh, this uh, site, uh, site plan. Yeah. What kind of ways are in Arstein to position this on, on the map? So how do we decide or define where this thing is? Well, uh, to, to, to stay in place where we had been already, it's, this is actually a list. And this has a north direction setting here, which I just used. Uh, and there is a sun position, which actually is not, it's, 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 it's a sun location, uh, but you can set the, the geolocation and based on that geolocation, the sun is determined uh, at, a, at a specific point of the globe and a specific date and time. This comes uh, interesting soon when we talk about the mm -hmm. solar access. Uh, and there is an, an, another thing, uh, and it's in the file uh, BIM and the project parameters. This is actually a BIM parameter that you can save and set up. It's actually here in the project location. It's like so the GPS coordinates. Yeah, so now when you click here, you have all those options that are available in the software. You can either go to the Google Maps. This is what I will use. You can use the same uh, cities list, or this is, a, this is also a place where you can set up the north direction. So if I click here, and I let's just, let's just try to find a location um, at, uh, an, in an Austria, I think uh, it was. Yes, uh, I think there's an empty lot still. So let's let's try to find it and position the model. I think this there. was the location. Yes, uh, let's, uh, yeah. let's go there. with this one. Yeah, I think that's good enough. It's a, uh, um, sorry, this is uh, in Hungarian. This means satellite. So if you click here, uh, you yes, can this, see this setting comes from the from the operating system. Yeah. So okay, you can't really change that. But uh, here we see an empty uh, vacant lot over there. Yeah, so maybe we can there. use that. So this is where you can um, set up a location. Let me just zoom in a bit, and so now we can see it's, mm -hmm. it's okay or not. Uh, What's then, next? then you can uh, change it. This is actually the project origin that you can uh, set up here, and then okay. So now the geolocation is set that, set mm -hmm. that way, and then I hit OK. Then from this point on, it is considered to be on that specific location of the globe. So when you make the solar access, which comes soon, uh, then uh, based on that geolocation, the software will calculate uh, the shadows. So what other ways are to use this uh, site plan? So how do we turn this into a 3D uh, terrain model? Well, um, this comes with a few red lines, as you can see here. These are the uh, the, the, the terrain lines. Uh, th those are not terrain lines yet. The, those are just, just lines yeah, that we can understand. Yeah, this is very important. This is just a two-dimensional DWG. Yeah, as uh, you can see, there is no 3D yet. There are yeah. some numerical values on it, but it's not it's not what we what we what we need. Well, and talking about that, there, it's it's also good to mention that uh, there are other ways how you can uh, import. Um, terrains. Mm -hmm. This is only one of the ways when you can manually uh, pick up uh, lines of a DWG file and, and turn them into a DWG file. But actually, if you have something uh, from, a, from an engineer who measured the site 
uh, and has that specific file format, Archline can read it and then you, need, you don't need to manually yes. create the, the terrain. And actually when you import the terrain from uh, Google Maps, you can also uh, mm -hmm. uh, automatically create it. And this is a situation when we have something in a drawing that we would like to turn into uh, a terrain. So we go to the uh, to the building part and there you can find the terrain uh, options now this these are the options that I was uh, talking about and this is what I will use now the creating the terrain by contour lines because those are the contour lines that I can click on and to be able to wor work on top of these I will use the uh, select an item this is actually isn't it an open chain instead yeah, I'm sorry, the, the select an open chain. So this, this open, an open chain is a series of items connecting to each other. That's what we call a so chain. So even dashed lines would work. Yeah, dashed lines are, okay. are fine. So I will go with the select an open chain and I click on one of the items of this open chain. So the software will run through it and it will recognize it. And now I can type the original value. It's 133.5 in uh, meters above the mm -hmm. sea level. And when I click OK, then it turns it into uh, this terrain line automatically. Then I can go through these uh, remaining uh, six or seven terrain lines. And while I do that, please yes. talk about the terrain features a uh, little bit. Because not all of them are going to be dealt with. And we had a separate webinar when we talked about terrain and how to import them, how to create them, and how to manage them. But since you're not going to show all that again, I'm just going to quickly tell you what, what, what's on here. It's just below me, you see a screenshot of the, of the available options. Uh, in addition to creating a terrain, uh, there's one element you can add to it, and that is a, is a plateau, um, a, a thing which is either cut into the terrain or, it, or the terrain is extended until that certain level is, is reached. We are going to show that pretty shortly. Another tool is the road, which is actually very good for creating service roads or any kind of zones in your terrain which should go along a path with a customized uh, cross-sectional profile. We also have building volumes that we are going to show. And there's, it's, it's very important we also have zones which could be uh, certain designated areas of yep. the terrain. And lastly, we have the, uh, the information on how we want to show the terrain. If you want to have the contour lines or we want to have a triangulated uh, view or perspective on it. Yeah. But let's go back to see what Ilish has here. So now you turned all the lines into terrain lines and what's yeah. next? So now uh, I just finished uh, with the determination of the last line and then now I click, uh, I, I hit enter to finish it and then I hit enter to close the command. Mm -hmm. And then now when I click on the 3D hammer, now the software can visualize the terrain. Oh yeah, so it's, it's done. So I can uh, rotate that and as you can see this has a few uh, slanted uh, areas yes. in, in it and this is what you talked about let's just talk about first the visual visual style of this uh, terrain the terrain automatically comes with a default material and triangulated uh, but this you can change you click on the terrain and you can use the local menu of it and there is the 3d representation actually this uh, also appears in the uh, top of the mm -hmm. uh, menu and here you can the, the, the default option was the triangle and you can also go with contours or grids i think contour is, is is absolutely fine now so i can see the contour the terrain lines of the of the levels uh, that are intersecting this terrain i think that building lot has uh, should be realized with a plateau right because yeah. you want to have a, a flat surface yeah, that's what you talked about a plateau is a flat surface so when you go to the terrain and you use the plateau tool you can first uh, add the add one and then you can obviously modify it so when you when you click on add you need to determine on which terrain you would like to add this plateau onto so you click on that and then you can actually just draw the contour of it or if you are lucky enough like like i uh, i am in this situation if it's also hatched uh, it's filled up with a pattern you can actually uh, click on this uh, select an item mm -hmm. and then you can select the pattern so you don't even need to uh, go through and as you can see now the software recognized its contour and now what you need to tell is the height of the terrain in the same coordinate system as the terrain itself it's always above sea level uh, so now as you can see there is this designated value this means zero which is the uh, the flat ground uh, should be uh, this specific value so I just type that and when I hit OK the software will ask me one last question and that's how the edges uh, should be treated of this plateau now there, uh, there are several scenarios you can actually just make a vertical cut into the ground or you can uh, make an extension like in a slanted uh, mm -hmm. or, or sloped uh, surface now this is what i will so do can first define the slope here. i will just yeah. de de define the slope all around everywhere uh, 45 degree angles so when i click ok the software does that 
and as you can see it's 45 degree angle here and it's 45 degree angle uh, there the software automatically decides whether you need to cut into the terrain or you need to extend the terrain to create the, the to, to make the connection between the plateau and the surrounding but what happens if you have a retaining wall because uh, here, yeah, uh, here i think we have <laughs> one so yep. you you may want to have a vertical cut yeah in that case uh, you have the option to click on the edge uh, of this plateau and find the terrain itself. This is actually the terrain, there's the hatch, so it, I need to go to the terrain. And here I can find the plateau options. The software already recognizes it. Okay, that's a contour of the plateau, so this is what you can do with the plateau. You can modify the slope on all of the sides or pick them side by side. And then when you do that, you can just tell that this is, well, now it's important that when you set up an inclination angle, in this case, zero means the vertical. So mm -hmm. you, can, you need to uh, say zero. And OK. And then now I click here as well. I tell this is also vertical. And I click here and I tell it's, it's also vertical. OK. And as you can see, uh, this, is, this is the contour of yes, how the whole thing that. will look like. And when I click and I hit Enter, now uh, it's vertical. Perfect. How about we actually add the retaining wall? OK. That's, uh, that's, just, that's just with a wall. So I just click on wall. I can select any of those uh, predefined styles that I have or I can create one. So I just go with this here and I just draw the wall around and I finish it here. And then I think I'm okay, so I'm just done with that. But uh, where's the wall? Yeah, but we cannot see that uh, in the 3D. And w why is that? So the reason to that, uh, and this, ha this could happen also when you already have a building and you import a terrain, That's, that would be the same situation. Now, when you start working with a project, you will always have a floor system, uh, a level system. Mm -hmm. This level system is a very simple one uh, with a ground floor, two floors stacked on top of that, one below, three meters each, and a few settings which we covered in a previous session how these, uh, these work. And there is a one, uh, one and very important uh, information where the zero of this building is. And if it's set to the sea level, now this is, remember this is already, through, 100 plus 30 meters above yes. sea level. So when I click OK, I will see that actually the building, my, my building parts are mm. at zero. zero. Okay, so so to fix there. this, I need to go to the uh, flow manager and tell that this should be the same value. If I remember well, this was the value of the zero. So you can compensate for the differences, yes. So I can elevate my building to the proper uh, plateau, uh, to the proper, proper place. And now I need to rebuild the 3D to update the content. Oh, so and now they're perfectly and nicely aligned here. Perfect. Uh, how about, <coughs> you, you talked about the shadow analysis. Yeah. And I think in order to see those shadows, we, maybe we need some neighboring buildings, especially because I see on the situation plan that there are some neighboring buildings. So how, how do we model them? Should we use yeah. walls and? You and can do that, them? but actually for that, there is the terrain and you just mentioned the building volume. This is uh, how you can actually quickly sketch building shapes around a real building. Mm -hmm. Not, not, uh, you don't want to uh, likely model all of those. So what I need the, is the contour of those. So I just go to the terrain, building volume, and then I just go around and enter. And then I can set up, this is by default, it's a block, but you can set up the values. Like for example, the top is maybe perhaps around eight meters. Uh, the, the, this surface, uh, look into the, to the facade, it's around perhaps three meters. And the angle of the roof should be perhaps, I don't know, 30 degrees or something like that. Well, let's just set it up for all sides. So this is what I've got. Um, let's just change it to, I don't know, 45 for all sides I and so on. So, so you can just uh, set this value to something that you much better uh, like. Uh, and so this is what mm -hmm. you will end up. And when you click OK, that appears here. Now let me just make a copy of this. Yes. And um, I'm just moving a copy. And instead of quickly, uh, I'm just uh, not recreating the whole thing, but I just, you know, reshape it oh, to so match. Just, yes. That, that's Save also fine. Save some time to, yeah. to do it this way. Uh, but my, my question is, and I think we can even see in the 3D what, what's going on, is that things are either pushed into the, into the terrain yeah. or maybe they are levitating above it. So Yeah, it's I because by default they are also yes. created on, on ground zero. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I need to tell is that if I know the, the, the height uh, here, because there is some measurement or something like that, it's very easy to tell that this should be, uh, I don't know, above or around this level or something like that. But in case like this, it, it's a few centimeters not, won't make uh, any change. So I just click here and I oh, so just visually, visually align okay. it. That, that's also fine in this case. And I just click there 
and I just do that with this one and I just let me just push it back a little bit like that. So, now that so we have the buildings ready and I think if I remember where we set up the north <laughs> direction and yeah. the geolocation as well. So best, north direction we can... is correct, geolocation mm -hmm. is correct. There are a few buildings. Let's just imagine this happens also when you already have the full building which we will load soon. And then you can go to the, um, to the view and there is the shadow and there is the solar access uh, option. And this uh, works in the 3D and this works in a specific uh, special representation of the 3D and the software will talk about that and it will when you hit OK it will automatically convert the mm -hmm. content into a vector graphic uh, drawing so you need content. To convert it or the software does it but it needs the software, to be in vector. Yeah the software does okay. it automatically and now I can tell that this is the time and day and um, the beginning uh, of the day and the end of the day in between which I would like to see uh, in 30 minutes steps how the shadow is cast uh, mm -hmm. around its content the other buildings and the, and the ground uh, also I can set up a morning color this will be something like an orange I will set up um, an evening color this will be a um, um, blue uh, also you can set up the um, the, the style of the text, uh, the style of the shadow. Uh, well, actually, now I would like to go with the filled shadow. So instead of a hatch pattern, I would like to see a nice solid, uh, either gray or I, I mean either orange or blue. And also, I just would like to see a, a hidden line representation like this. I don't want to have colored surfaces like uh, the, the terrain shouldn't be green. Now it should be just black and white mm -hmm. and with, the, with the shadows cast on that. And then uh, I also would like to calculate it for all of the surfaces. Now this is, a, this is a, an, an option uh, that could save you a lot of time if you enable this option on a larger project because in that case you can just select the surfaces uh, which the software should treat uh, as uh, shadow receivers. Uh, if you have, uh, I don't know, tens of thousands of surfaces, this is a big time saver. So let's just, uh, now, because now the project is very small, I just disabled that, so I will calculate on all, the, all of the surfaces. I just go with OK. And then now, as you can see, the software calculates the from morning, uh, 30 minutes steps, it's, it's calculating the, the, the value mm -hmm. of the shadow. So now we can see that our building, which will be here, uh, will also always receive shadows from a, a little bit of uh, shadow uh, from the ground itself. That's, that's natural, but it won't receive uh, shadows from the surrounding buildings. Perfect. I think now we can load up in the next phase yeah. of this project and we can talk about... Yeah, before we do that, let me just mention, because we, we talked about the change of the, uh, the drawing. So now it's a vector drawing, as you can mm -hmm. see. So you won't be able to you know, rotate it like this because it's a drawing. Uh, but at any time, you can go back and sw switch it back to the, the image view, which was where I left off. And then I can you know, just yes. uh, go there and back between so the that's, two that's the, that's the switch, that's, that's the double that's the, that's the, the way back, representation yeah. of ways. Um, so now let's load up the, the next phase of this project. And we talk about details that we can add to the surrounding. Because yeah. uh, importing and processing this, this uh, uh, situation plan is just one part of the story. Yeah. How do we elaborate it? What are the things that we haven't showed yet? Yeah, last time we covered how to create the building itself. Now we created how to create the, now, now we talked about how to create the terrain. And to talk about a few other things, let me just show you the surrounding side of that. For example, there is um, a staircase that I would like to create. So let's just talk mm -hmm. about that. Uh, the staircase uh, is a building part, which you can find here and there are built-in uh, shapes that you can start with and by the way if you don't find the, the exact shape that you would like to create then don't worry if it's similar then go with that and you can always reshape that or also there is a tool in ArchLine which allows you to create uh, stair by threads that means you can even uh, turn a DWG contour drawing of a stair into a real stair easily mm -hmm. in, in a software. So, but now I, I know that this is kind of a, a, a turning uh, shape which is here, an L form shape. So I just click here and I use the contours. These are, these are actually not real um, oh, items yet. Yeah, those are just drawings. drawings. This, this, this was part of the imported DWG file. So I just go around and find the final location of this staircase and then now the software automatically creates this staircase. Now, just as we covered this already, you can go to the details of this staircase and you can at any time change the height of the staircase. For example, let me just change it, uh, I don't know, 30 centimeters larger. And whenever you do that, you just wait a little bit and then the software recalculates the shape and it, it will tell you that uh, whether the, 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 the staircase itself is ergonomic or not. You can also change the width of the staircase 
and uh, most importantly you can also add some railing uh, to it so I will add uh, a railing to the left side uh, it's, it's here and let's just go with this one these are actually styles uh, of the, the railings that you can actually create by yourself mm -hmm. or you can just go with the default built-in ones and let's just go with okay so now I have this one now there is one another thing which is quite specific to the external staircases like this here and sometimes they do have a few walls around here now this this can be created two ways you can actually literally create walls and the, and the staircase has a setting to cut the walls and uh, that's one solution or you can just go to the settings of the staircase go to the support and then you can actually change the the the, the thickness of the weight slab this is the weight slab you can change it to something very very thick like like four meters and in that case you can easily end up with something like this and this you can you know change the texture on, on yes i was about to ask you that how do we copy the retaining walls texture onto this waste slab well to be able to do that i just right clicked here and i use the fine material and fine mat material tells me that this is stonewall 40 which when i click and drag and drop over the surface i can tell that i would like to change and replace the mat material on this specific object so when i click here the software will change that a few words about using external objects in the in the plan. Uh, for example, in in this case, we could work with uh, a few um, ways or yeah. benches or something like that uh, around uh, ha happening around this building. So for that, uh, just as we mentioned, perhaps already, uh, you can use the beam libraries. Uh, there's a wide selection of things that you can uh, connect to, like for example, beamobjects.com, Synchronia, or our own showroom. Uh, you can also download sanitaryware objects and you can connect to Cadenas. These are uh, all there built in. And you can also go to the 3D warehouse now. This is a very popular option, so I will go with this one now. And I will just go to find a uh, bench, for example. Let's just go with a very simple uh, search term and when I find something that I like uh, like for example let's just go with this one for example uh, I can just you know check the details if I like it and if I like it I can go to download and click on sketch up uh, the latest version and then the software downloads it and I can automatically place it either in 3d if I started the command in 3d or in 2d you know if I place it in uh, 3d here let's just align it with the wall like that it automatically appears in the 2D as well, mm -hmm. where I can, you know, just refine its position. And here comes an interesting thing that you can, uh, just as you saw, you can just click on the move and move it someplace else, or you can just, you know, fine uh, tune it uh, with the shift and the uh, directions. This is nudging uh, when you just, you know, either move it like that, or you just click on that. I'm just using the yes the, the arrow keys, arrow the keys keyboard. The so this is how you can, you can move it uh, north south east west on, on your floor plan yeah so that's how you can you can move it that's uh, that works in the 2d and it's very good for positioning the two-dimensional blocks groups and, and yeah so you can this, this move all four directions I think one one thing that we <laughs> haven't talked about last time uh, when we talked about how to create the roof is the the gutter because yeah because we do have some in this uh, model but we haven't talked about how to create them so maybe this will be the place to touch upon that too. Yeah, well actually there is a there is a dedicated tool to do that and it's uh, in the building in roof and it's called the gutter and then you can just click on, on one of the edges, uh, the bottom edges of the, the roof where you would like to place it. This is how this and this was created. So when I click here and I tell the software that I like this cross section, I need to change the, the, the material uh, and I can add a downspout with a specific cross section with, with a specific path. I can set up where it will uh, be created and so on. Uh, then this is how you can actually fine tweak and, and create a gutter with all the downspout and, and everything else. Now I actually already have a saved version of it so I just mm -hmm. load that. Uh, this, is, this is like styles for the walls and, and things like that. This will be automatically adopted to the, to the plan. So when I click OK, the software will automatically create that. Perfect. So <coughs> you can still reposition it, but the point is that yeah. you can pre-save these uh, objects and you, then you can work with that. Another thing, and this, this also comes to the, to the roofs, mm -hmm. is, uh, is how do we create uh, the firewall that we see right here? Because otherwise, we, we know that the, the roof is able to cut the wall, but in this scenario, the wall and the roof is in no interaction. So how do we make a shape like that? 
Yeah, the keyword here is profiling. You can actually design uh, a profile for a wall. You can, uh, you can always design a cross-section profile, a front of view profile, and top view, top view profile. Now, th this case is when you need to determine how the wall looks from the front. Uh, by default, it will be a rectangular shape. And uh, this was already created manually to look like this. Uh, to reveal the trick, let me just undo what happened here. If I right click here and I select uh, this option here, I can delete the, pr the front top profile. See, th this is how it was originally uh, mm -hmm. designed. It was a regular uh, normal wall. And then somehow it was reshaped. To reshape a wall, you can go with several options. And now I will go with the most classic approach when you treat it as, a, as an elevation design, when you, when you work with the elevation. So for that, I will just go to, the, to this uh, view here and I will set up a specific view. To understand which I should select here, I should always check the 2D as well. Because here I can see that actually this wall is this one. Mm -hmm. So if I, so this if I imagine myself thing. standing here, this is, this is always the situation. If I imagine standing myself here, this is the behind view, this is the front view, this is the left view and this is the right view. So now I need the view from behind. So I click here and I select this one and I go on this uh, list and select this option. So now it's, it's kind of a, uh, an elevation. We will actually talk about the elevations uh, later as a bit more details in the following mm -hmm. session. So now to be able to use this, I need to turn this into a drawing. We already covered that the software automatically turned it into a drawing, but you can do it manually. Uh, to be able to draw on it, you need to change it into a vector drawing. So now this is what happens. Uh, to be able to work with that as, a, as an elevation, uh, I can change this to uh, um, a hidden line removal drawing. This is what I've got. And then I, I need to select a part which I would like to uh, use for my editing purposes. Mm -hmm. This is the drawing part that I need to copy, make a copy of. I, I just use Control copy Control c and I pick it up with this point. And then I move back to my 2D drawing and I paste it, Control v and I paste it here. Now, as you can see, uh, this is a bunch of lines. These are, not or, uh, these are already not the original walls uh, or, or roof items or anything else. This is just the counter line. If I would like to use it for my purposes, I need to click on the outer side of the wall that I would like to cut the profile off. And I need to go to the context menu. And here I can find profile. And as you can see, I can always add a, a, a a total uh, complete uh, frontal profile which I can align with the drawing uh, that is a basis uh, of my of my addition additions this is what I do and then I use the uh, closed loop command here to recognize this the closed boundary is boundary it? here once you click on that you see it on already on the on the elevation drawing or this is the not 3D. An elevation drawing that's the 3d that's actually, actually the three just represented as mm -hmm. a drawing and then now when I go back to the original view the uh, image view so this is what happens. I can just rotate it around and then I can go back and change the visual style back to the, the, the original. The default is actually consistent color and this is what I, you will see then. And th that's how it was created. Now the, the steps uh, leading to this are always the same. Use something as a reference, uh, mm -hmm. make a copy of it and then use the profile command of your wall to follow that reference drawing wherever it comes from. So that's actually what we wanted to discuss during this, uh, this conversation on the using architectural uh, drawings and, and data in ArchLine uh, webinar. We talked about how to import PDFs, JPEGs, um, either whether they are, they are vector-based or, yeah. or, or raster images. And we also talked about how to use the XF and DWG drawings and how to turn them into a terrain like the one you see on the screen right yeah. now. So that's what we wanted to cover today. And anything that we haven't covered, will be covered uh, next week when we talk about architectural design documentation. And that's when that's the time and, and place when we talk about creating sections, elevations, uh, quantity takeoffs, complying uh, complying the plot layout, plot and layout. even talking about scheduling as well, which is a brand yeah. new thing in, in Archline. Yeah. But that's something that we are going to talk about next week, uh, same time as, as today. So see you next Wednesday at uh, 3 p.m. I would like to thank you for your attention. And uh, if you like what you have seen, like and subscribe uh, to, the, uh, to our channel yes, so yes, you would never yes. miss a show like this one. We know that you will want that. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.